It's a fan. It moves air. What more can you say? <laughs> what the heck? All right, fine. I'll do the review. Hello and welcome back to another review video. This is not for a grow light this time. This is for an inline duct fan for grow tents sent to me by TerraBloom. This is the model ECMF-150-R. It is a six inch inline duct fan. There are other sizes in this model line as well as other products and different types of duct fans on the TerraBloom website. So if you are interested in this, you can find the link for the website in the description below. So today in this video, we're gonna be talking about what makes a quality product like the TerraBloom and why you would choose it versus this brand over here. And we're gonna be doing that by comparing noise levels and talking about a few specifications. Uh, so the first thing you can see here, obviously, is a size difference. The TerraBloom is a six inch and it is smaller than this brand over here, which is only a four inch. That's the main difference right off the bat that you can see. And if you are the person who wants to put a duct fan inside your grow tent and you wanna save space, obviously the choice is made for you right here. The other difference though is the TerraBloom is actually a DC motor and this one over here is an AC motor. And AC motors are not very efficient when it comes to producing airflow and they also produce a lot more noise. And by that I mean they don't necessarily produce more noise with the air movement, they produce more noise with the motor itself. So if you actually turn the speed all the way down on a, on a product like the TerraBloom that uses a DC motor, you don't hear any motor noise. The only noise you hear is the air moving itself. To where the product over here, like this brand, uh, which I don't, not, I don't remember the name of, but I've been, been using it for a number of years now, and it's been annoying. Uh, because I have the airflow set all the way down, as low, almost as low as it can go, and then the motor still makes this hum to it. And it's, that's pretty much the same thing that happens with any AC motor. Uh, also, the, the way that it produces the airflow is also a pretty big difference. You can see here that this, the opening is a lot smaller than the whole housing itself. And that's because the rotor inside there, the thing that actually makes the air move, is kind of like a water wheel. It actually has um, blades. It's, they're pretty typical of old duct fans. They're perpendicular to the opening, and they, when it goes around, it scoops the air forces to the center and then forces it out the front. It's not a very efficient way to move air. It does create a decent amount of pressure, but these days there are better options. And the TerraBloom is, like I said, the DC motor. The fan blades, though, are typical of pretty much any kind of fan. They aren't turned sideways like the rotor inside of the other one over here. It also is designed to produce a lot of pressure as well. The pressure it produces is, is kind of important because if you are hooking up anything in line, such as like a carbon filter, um, you need that additional pressure to be able to move the air efficiently and quietly. And this does this very well. I've been using the TerraBloom for about a week now and I couldn't be happier with it. We're gonna be looking at the noise levels. We're gonna compare these with the decibel level on my phone. The app I'm using here, obviously you can't really trust the app to be accurate as far as what the number you see here, but compar comparatively, if I'm just comparing something, the number is going to be consistent. So we can trust that at least. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is the brand over here uses, you, you can't actually turn the speed down without an external controller. So you have to buy something like this separate. This is just a speed controller for, for AC fans. And in order to do that, you have to just change this dial. It works pretty well because most of the time you're just setting it and forgetting it. But if you're actually, you know, if you're changing the type of lighting you have in your, in your grow tent and it produces more heat, then you're going to need uh, to adjust it. So it's not always set it and forget it, but it just depends on what you're doing. The TerraBloom uses a wireless remote control. And I was kind of skeptical of this at first because I don't know why, why you would need something to be wirelessly controlled. But after using it, I really do like it. This is not a IR, meaning it doesn't use infrared light. It's radio frequency. So you can use this up to, I believe, 50 feet away. And it works very well. You don't have to point it at anything. You just hang it up somewhere and you just push the button on here and set it and forget it. The other thing I, I didn't really realize about this is if you're trying to adjust the airflow in your tent by uh, changing openings and, and kind of directing where you want the air to enter at versus where you want it to leave, 
So if you're trying to monitor something and you just want to look at something, you hold this in your hand and then just push the button and then you change the speed of it while you're monitoring what's kind of going on in your tent. So it makes it really nice to have a wireless remote control. The only downside I can say about a re the wireless remote control on the TerraBloom is there is no switch on this fan at all. So if this doesn't work, I don't think this fan, you, I don't think you, you can use it. I think it actually turns on when you plug it in uh, eventually, but you wouldn't be able to change the speed without the wireless remote. So if there's any downside I could say about the TerraBloom, it's just that. Everything else has been positive in my experience so far. Uh, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to turn on the larger 4-inch duct fan over here. I'm going to turn it down to its lowest setting, and you'll be able to hear it on the microphone, and we're going to look at the number on the app. So right now the noise floor in this room, if I don't talk at all, is about 48 decibels. So we're going to go ahead and turn on the other brand here. Okay, now that is, that's on its lowest setting right now, and you can... You should be able to hear in the microphone the hum of the motor. And on its lowest setting, we're going to go ahead and look at what we're seeing on the decibel meter. So holding it about six inches away, we're putting, about, we're putting out about 65 decibels, which isn't too bad. But let's go ahead and turn on the TerraBloom and see what kind of noise that puts out. So now the TerraBloom is on its lowest setting, and the airflow uh, coming out of this is about the same as the other one. The only difference is right now is the noise level. And right now we're sitting between 59 and 60 dB, so it is considerably quieter. So you can clearly see and you should be able to hear in the microphone that the TerraBloom is quieter and it doesn't have that annoying hum. So now we're going to turn up the speed all the way to max on this brand over here, the 4-inch duct fan, and see what kind of noise that puts out at its highest setting. Okay, so now the 4-inch duct fan is at its highest setting, its max output, and it's putting out about between 85 and 88 decibels. So now we'll turn on the TerraBloom and see what kind of noise that puts out at its max setting. You can see here it's about 83, 84 decibels and the fan is putting out so much pressure that it is pushing itself along the table. <laughs> now in most cases you're probably not running the fan at this high of a rate uh, and we're going to talk about that right now. Okay so now the fans are both off and I can talk more normal. One thing I can say about my experience in using inline duct fans is in most cases you're not running them anywhere higher than a medium to a low setting. In most cases, I think people are not having it on the highest setting, so the noise level at that setting isn't really a big, a big problem. If you are running it at a higher setting like that, you are probably going under like a massive operation. <laughs> um, I, in most cases, I don't think people are doing that, for not for the home grower anyways. So I want to talk about some specifications here, and I got them written down so I wouldn't forget them. The TerraBloom here produces 350 cubic feet per minute at 40 watts. That's its max setting. Obviously, on its lowest setting, it's going to be using a lot less electricity, and it's going to be obviously moving less air. But one thing about the DC motors is they are much more efficient in consuming energy. So in order for like this here, the AC motor, to produce a similar airflow to this at its max setting, this would have to be using 70 to 100 watts versus the 40 watts in the max bloom. As far as pressure goes, I'm not too familiar with pressure when it comes to pascals, but the TerraBloom apparently produces 500 pascals. And I, I have to believe that because this does produce a lot of pressure. And one thing I have noticed actually is I've actually hooked up a filter to it. And you can tell when you hook up the filter, filter to something like this, there is significantly less flow coming out of it because it does not have the ability to uh, push the air through or pull the air through the filter. Uh, it just doesn't have the, the power to do that to where the TerraBloom has a lot of strength and it can pull the airflow through something like a filter at a lower rate and still have a better airflow. So in other words, you can have it set at a lower setting and still get decent airflow out of it, even if you did have a filter on it. The nice thing about like this model here, the TerraBloom, is that you can actually link up uh, several of them together. And one thing I did not mention as a positive about the wireless remote control is you can control up to 20 fans at the same time with this single remote. So if you had a bunch of these set up with a bunch of different grow tents, uh, you can turn them all on or off 
with just one remote and change the settings up for all of them with one remote. So it is kind of nice. There isn't a whole lot else I can say about the inline duct fans. Like I said, in the beginning of this video, it moves air, it does its job. But if I was going to choose a inline duct fan, I would be definitely choosing this model versus something like this because the Terrabloom is actually this, about the same price, if not less than I paid for this fan over here. I hope that was helpful to anyone out there looking for a duct fan or kind of didn't know the difference between them. And if you're in the market for one, uh, I would definitely recommend something like the Terrabloom. There's just nothing really bad to say about it. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.